I'd say, I'd say better doctors is understanding that it's not the way, it's the moment. And when I say the moment, I'm not talking like a moment in time. A moment is a biomechanical term for cork. Cork is a term we use in classical mechanics, the, the garage and, and, and NASCAR, you know, torque. And in biomechanics, applying it to biological systems, we use the term moment. Okay. What is moment? What is torque? Rotational influence. Rotational influence. It's a little bit more involved than F is equal to MA, straight line stuff. In straight line stuff, it's all collinear. Doing the checkbook, in and versus out, how much you bring in, how much you go out, and just very straight line, straightforward. But when you're talking about rotational things, man, some, some, some non-obvious stuff happens. Like every force isn't trying to spin something. Let me give you a couple examples. If, um, if I was trying to rotate the table, like to reposition it, and I pushed on the table right in the middle, I wouldn't be trying to rotate the tape. I, I, I need to come out here. I need to apply my force very strategically to try to accomplish rotation. <clears throat> so not every force is trying to spin something. When I say it's not the weight, it's the moment. You already know this. You've already experienced this. It's the difference between holding dumbbells at your side and trying to hold them out at your side. It's a big difference. But the dumbbell is the same weight, and the mass of my arm is the same. But when the dumbbells are here, planet Earth is collinear. Planet Earth is just trying to dislocate your shoulder. But when you are here, when you're out here, right? That's perpendicular. Now. Like concurrent. So we have to master the concept of moments and torques. And once again, I'm going to show you, we're going to work out a couple things, but it's all about the concept. It's all about the concept of if I'm doing a straight leg, which I know you guys know what that is, but what if we don't? Because sometimes people call things different things, so that's unfair to say. You guys don't know what an exercise is. Um, my grandma never used the word cat. She would always say me new. And so I thought of me new was like some new creature that lived at my grandma's and stuff. And then, I was, and then my mom was like, no, she had us just a cat. Oh, um, oh gosh, I don't know why I hate this. Or All right, guys, I'm, I'm off today. I'm riled up about y'all's situation. Yeah. All right, check this out. I think this is going to make sense. If it doesn't, it's my job to make things. So think of today's lecture as just introducing you to this concept that we really, really, really need to develop. And where in the world did I save that picture? I'm such a green one. Corinthian, that, uh, it is too hot for a penguin. Ready, go. My brother, the photo is like 100 pixels. So I did. So I did. So I did.
You know what's ridiculous? A, a visiting professor yanks down on that thing, break it, and we have no way to fix it because this building and that thing was made in 86. And the visiting professor was like, you know, and I'm just like, but I like a chalk. All right. Here's what I'm trying to get us to introduce you to the concept of. So you have a exercise that's going to involve the flexion and the extension. Okay. Pretend you did some stuff like what's the extra do? What's the way you try to do? You try to flex her. So we need extension pulling muscles. And when I actually do the extension, it's going to be concentric. And when I do flexion, it's going to be eccentric. And bring back. What we're doing now is how does, in the presence of a constant weight, the health weight and the mass per leg, how does the moment fluctuate in the range of motion of the sex? How does the torque change? And there's two torques here. There's the external, this is why I use these terms, there's the external force. Well, now we need to see that that external force is trying to create an external moment. It's trying to cause rotation. And then you're going to have your internal moments. So all we're doing is just leveling up. It's not just about external forces and internal forces. It's external moments versus internal moments. Torque, V-torque. Because okay. remember, guys, our joints can't move in that would be a bad day. Dislocation. So what I need you guys to eventually see is that the definition of a torque or a moment is a force times the perpendicular distance between where that force is being applied to its axis of rotation. That's what a torque is. That's what a moment is. It's the force application times its perpendicular distance from the force application to the axis of rotation. That's all in your notes. What I need you guys to see in layman's terms is that when her knee, let's look at her right knee, the one that's flexed. Planet Earth is not trying to rotate her knee at all. She's just hanging it over the side. You see that? So if the external force has zero perpendicular distance, Anything times zero to zero. So the components of a moment, a force and a distance, specifically perpendicular, not parallel. So if you have zero perpendicular distance, by default, you're going to have zero moment. That's like saying, um, if I go to open the door, I'm not going to push it here. It's greater torque. I'm leaning the same traders over, and then eventually the door opens, not because I pushed harder, it's because I was able to multiply my push times a greater perpendicular distance, which makes the rotational impact greater. If, in, if, if you're, you're struggling with a lug nut while changing the car, you, you get a longer, we, we, we call them cheat, cheat stick, cheater stick. You take a piece of pipe and you put it in there to increase the moment. I only have so much strength, but I can amplify it by a greater perpendicular distance and thus have a greater torque. So you have the same mass, you have the same weight on both of those knees, but you don't have the same moment at both of those knees. On the knee on the right, gravity is passing parallel to her weight or to her mass. So in other words, planet Earth's not trying to move her knee at all. So if planet Earth is not trying to rotate her knee, your muscles have nothing to go against. Right? Remember, your muscles are reactioning. Why do you think we always started with, what's the external force trying to do to you? In class, I'd be like, I'm trying to push you down. I need muscles that pull up. I'm trying to push you up. I need muscles that pull down. Well, if gravity is not trying to do anything you need, guess what you get to do? Take a break. The other knee, though, is different. 
The other knee now has an external moment. They both have the same force acting on them, except the one that's extended has the force of gravity instead of parallel to the lower leg. Now that force is perpendicular to the lower leg. Now it's trying to spin the merry-go-round. Now it's trying to open the door. Now it's trying to create rotation. So if the external moment goes up, logically my internal rotation influencers have to go up. So here's what I'm saying. This is the easiest position. It gets harder and harder and harder and harder and harder, and this is the hardest. No different then it gets harder and harder and harder and harder and it's the hardest. Same thing. Same weight, but it's a different moment. And if we change the external moment, your internal moment has to change also. And for our muscles, we don't have the ability to detach and pull at different pulses necessarily. So you know what your muscles have to do? I'm just going to pull harder. And for some of you athletic trainers and, and allied health fitness professionals, pulling harder, working harder at certain angles may not be safe for certain muscles when it <laughs> bad positions. <clears throat> So torque and moment. So let's go to our handy dandy supplemental materials. One point reference. It's not the weight, it's the moment. Now, I just gave you a, um, a free weight example. What we're working towards, what we're working towards is eventually being able to see how moments change. Uh, the moment gets greater and greater and greater. The moment gets less and less and less and less and less. We need to be able to see, does it increase? Does it decrease? Does it stay the same? You can have a moment that stays the same. That's what's great about machines. So watch this. You guys know how I go to but that's what we really need. And forgive again, forgive my scattering today. Um, I promise I'll be more of uh, so check this out. Check out what I think is the usefulness of. If, if we get it to work, <laughs> get it to work. It's like this brain fog. I'm trying to find before and then. Look how happy she looks. It always looks so bad. All right, here's one. How you hack a web file. All right. Check this out. Stop it. Go away. Stop it. So weird. All right. So here's what we're working towards, guys. And this is, again, what's going to make you better coaches, clinicians. Just in general, is seeing moments, seeing fluctuations in moments. And this fluctuation to external moments is going to be fluctuations in internal moments. 
for this machine exercise, they're doing the same motion. It's like the ankle pump exercise. But here, the moment doesn't change. So the force stays perpendicular to the range of motion. Think about it. On the photo on the left, the padding is pushing. Here's the lower leg. The padding is pushing this way. And when he extends, the padding stays pushing perpendicular. Does that make sense? So if the external moment stays consistent, that means my internal moment can stay consistent. That means I can do more consistent work to a full range of motion. Now, this lecture isn't about what's better than what, because you know what's one of the negatives about that? Expensive and it takes up a lot of space. But the trade-off is you can have consistent moments through consistent ranges of motion. So what I'm offering, and again, I'm, I'm showing you what's to come. Let's say you're doing ankle cuff weights, and you know that the moment is going to be greatest in an extended position here, and you know there's going to be zero moment in a flex position, but you're trying to activate those muscles in that position as well. So muscles are intended. If all you do is work a muscle at a certain angle, it will only get you, like isometrically at a certain angle, it's only going to adapt within a five degree window of that. You get it out of that, it's because of the active and bias and stuff. So here's what we're going to eventually do. It's a tool. You know that the moment's going to start to go down. So how do you compensate for that? Adding a little manual resistance. You add a manual resistance perpendicular. You become the machine. The, you, the therapist, becomes the machine. Or reposition them. Let's say you do your first set here, where the moment's going to be the greatest in this position. Next set, buddy, you go here, where the moment's going to be greatest in flex position. Less, greater, less, greater. Greater, less, greater, less. I'm trying to give you guys a toolkit that you can use in the real world, practical world, to figure a lot of stuff out. Okay. And the first step is to understand how it's not just forces. It's forces specifically applied perpendicular to an axis, which creates a torque or a moment. Okay. Let's do some more examples. You're just introducing it to this concept. At all form tips. <laughs> all right. okay, I really I didn't want all that. Kind of, I just want the before and the after. Okay, so here's what I need you guys to see in this. And guys, there's no perfect, where do you start, where do you, you know, should I start with the actual, you know, formulas and blah, 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 we'll get there. I like to just try to keep it simple, like, like this common sense, like you know this stuff. And once we kind of feel it and see it, then I'll be like, here's the formula, here's the stuff. But you know darn well that as she abducts, it's going to get harder and harder and harder. You know it. And as she add up, it's going to get easier and easier and easier. And how do you explain that? Well, it's 
the, the, the dumbbells don't change. They don't get heavier. Our arm doesn't get heavier. Gravity doesn't get stronger. But the perpendicular distance between what gravity is trying to do to those dumbbells on her arm gets further and further and further away from her shoulder. And so it's the same mass, but times a greater distance, and that's what the torque for the moment is. The external moment gets greater and greater and greater and greater, and that's why it gets harder and harder and harder. Now, the muscles that are influencing that motion, the deltoids, the supraspinatus, and biceps, straight guy, long head, they they have no choice. They're still fully in the same place. So they have no choice but to match that increased external moment by just pulling in more force because their perpendicular distance isn't going to change. So that's why they just have to ramp up <laughs> and pull harder and harder and harder and harder and harder. Less and less and less and less and less and less. It gets easier. It's not about the weight. It's about the moment. That's why, like, some trainers, which I agree with, like, sometimes you have, we, we used to do this exercise with my softball girls. Um, we called them prone butterflies, but I would get them prone to work, like, on some scapula stuff, and and they'd say, well, how much, you know, what kind of weight do I need? I was like, you, you don't need Because your arm is weight. And not only that, when you when you have tight muscles in certain places, not only are you going against it, it's we don't think of our own muscles as doing antagonists. But if I have tight hamstring, which I do, and I say, hey, hip flexors, flex my hip, and all of a sudden they start to get some extra resistance. That's actually for my hamstrings getting in the way of that. That's a that's an external force to my flexors, even though it's inside. Does that make sense? So we would do these prone butterflies where I'd, I'd make sure they weren't cheating. They would squeeze their scapula and then say, okay, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Now don't let your hands fall and then I'd let it go and their hands would be like, Ugh. and they're like, but I don't see it. I don't have any dumbbells. It's not about the weight. It's about the moment. It's about the torque. So some of the things I think we need to see right away, or, hey, we have some exercises that obviously the moment is going to fluctuate, and if the external moment fluctuates, that means my internal muscles are going to fluctuate. And then we have other exercises where the external moment stays consistent or more consistent. And there's pros and cons to each. I'm not saying only do this. I'm not saying only do that. I need to teach you the pros and the cons. So, like, look at like a um, lateral raised machine where the padding is going to stay perpendicular whether you're here or here or here. It's going to move with you. So that way, your muscles are working in a similar amount of effort down here versus up. It's not all or none. It's not, it's not like, you know, dude, this is really hard, and dude, this is really easy. What are the trade-offs? Take up a lot of space. It costs a lot of money. So, you know, these options aren't necessarily options in point belt. But again, if you know how these moments fluctuate, you can spot them. Let me give you another example. I used to do this uh, with a buddy of mine when we would lift. And uh, he would do would do uh, dumbbell press. So let me show you an example of what I'm trying to say. Some of the concepts here. All right, check this out. Yeah, there's my leg. I got next. Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> That's me fussing at me. Like, Make a mistake. Ah. Oh. Campbell's Law, it is impossible to look natural while trying to take a fitness-related picture. 
But then again, maybe that's just how we look doing exercises, right? Maybe we just look silly. All right, guys, here's what I'm getting at. I think most of us know that during, like, say, like the shoulder press with the dumbbells, okay, you get your set and you do. And then you kind of catch your breath up here. Catch your breath up here. This is easier than being here. Because up here, there is much less moment. Parallel, gravity is parallel to my shoulder versus when I start to move it away. So what my friend and I would do when I was at Auburn learning about forks and moments, I was like, dude, let's try something. And you know, over the course of time, you guys kind of know how many reps you could do, wait. I mean, you, you have that data. You kind of know when you start to fatigue out. I was like, dude, let's try this. And so what my friend, when he would press up, I started creating a manual resistance against him about right there. And when he'd get to the top, I'm trying to pry his arms away from me. And he was done after four reps. Because his muscles at that angle never had an external force creating a moment. So therefore, his muscles never had to work against a moment at that angle. He, did, he, he wasn't allowed to rest up there. Or imagine fly exercise where, just imagine, you're here and you're just like catching your breath. Like, and it gets harder and harder. You catch breath. Versus having a partner to create a manual resistance of a torque here where there is no rest. It's almost like it's almost like creating a machine environment when you have a spotter to do it. And that's not just for heavy weights. You could do that in therapy. If somebody's doing therabands or lightweight, I'm not saying you gotta yank them but you could just apply gentle resistance through a range of motion when you know the torque or the moment is gonna be changing. We want consistent external moments so that we can get consistent internal moments. That's all it is, that's all it's about. Here's another example that I think you guys know very well. Like you're doing preacher curls and your face tells you when the moment's the greatest and when it's the easiest. But like you're like, okay, I got this. One more rep. Uh, Kelly Clarkson. And then it gets easier again, right? More and more and more perpendicular. The moment, four stayed the same. The weight stayed the same. How far away that weight was being applied perpendicular, my elbow was changing. And it was getting greater and greater and greater and greater, and then less and less and less and less, until when I got here, there was nothing. Nothing was trying to extend my elbows from under me. So if nothing's trying to extend my elbows, your flexion pullers are like, you get a break. Let me know when something's trying to extend you. That makes sense. So on Monday, we'll actually go through the formulas. I'll show you. Technically, this is what it is. But I just wanted to give you a heads up and you know all this stuff. You know this. The further something is applied perpendicular, the harder it's trying or the greater it's trying to rotate your joints. 
So the more you're going to have to recruit your muscles to go against. The weight can alter its perpendicularity. In other words, I could choose to do the lateral raises with the weight close, or I could choose to do it full. Your muscles are pulling where they're pulling. So their only option to manipulate their internal moment is to yank more. Okay? It's not about the force. It's about the moment. Yeah, have a good week. Thank you.